All right, guys, you finally got us to cave. Today, we're gonna try Linux. And we're gonna do it in Toasty Bros fashion. Welcome to the Ultra Budget Gaming PC Challenge Linux Edition. We're gonna spin the wheel to determine which distro we have to try, what our budget is for the PC, and of course, we gotta throw in a fun caveat. We're gonna spin that wheel after we're from today's sponsor. You thought we wouldn't catch you playing games with an unactivated Windows license. Well, the fun's over, buddy. If only you would have listened to us when we tried to tell you. With one visit to GVG Mall, you could have prevented all this. Using our discount code TB20 on a Windows license, or bought one with the money you saved from purchasing on their website. It wouldn't have had to end like this, but you, did. <laughs> but you didn't want great deals, or to help us thank our sponsor, so this is where it ends. Don't worry, we left your computer in there. But it only has Microsoft Office that we purchased with a discount code from GVG Mall. Have fun behind bars. So guys, when planning this video, I went ahead and made some slightly different rules in our typical wheel spin challenge. So for this Linux challenge, we have to get a Linux distro that'll be decided by the wheel, and then we need to play at least three games and demo the games, show that they actually work. We need to test three real life applications, so something that Matt and I would actually do in our day-to-day -day lives. And then after we're done with that, we need to actually sell the other person on our distro and why it's the best. And we got a bunch of different Linux distros. Of course, these are not all of them, but we have a good amount of one Ones that were recommended as gaming focused distros. I know you guys are very passionate in this community and there's probably <laughs> gonna be one that we missed out. So let us know down below, but be nice about it, please. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is spin the wheel, see which distro we get, the price of the bill we have to build, and then also the random caveat that makes it either easier on us or harder. So who's spinning first? Joan, I always let you pick. Who's going Let's first? This time. Me? Yeah, okay. Time. So I will say, and this, if this is rigged, it's rigged. I really want to try Bazite. I really want to, because that's kind of what inspired me to get back into the Linux distro game. So let's hit the wheel and see if I happen to get it. And also, we added more options here. So You get two chances of getting it. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? He got it's it! It's rigged! <laughs> yes! Bazite, let's go! The, the good news is, I, I don't have any... I don't really care. Alright. <laughs> I don't really care. Bazite, I got the one I wanted. That's awesome. Alright. you get the budget for it, though? I'm going to shuffle the budget again to make sure you guys know this wasn't rigged. I'm hitting shuffle a bunch of times, I swear. Here, go, go ahead and tell them the budget that you wanted, too. I see want, uh, <laughs> 250. 300. 300. You got more than he wanted. Alright, 300 bucks. That's, That's pretty cool. I know Bazite's very AMD focused, so we'll definitely be doing an all AMD build. Now, will I be able to do a custom PC, or will I have to use a office PC upgrade only? Will I lose some money, gain some money? Do I have to use RGB? Let's figure it out here. Hopefully you get, get something a little... Upgrade Ooh. office PC only, so I cannot do a custom build. So. Probably kind of good for you. It actually. might be kind of good. I just got to find a Ryzen based office computer to upgrade, most likely. So let's go over again. We got Bazite, which is the distro I wanted to try. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, $300 for the budget, and I have to upgrade an office PC. So let's go ahead and shuffle everything and let Jackson spin the wheel. See, like I said, I don't care which distro I get. I hope I just get a good amount of money, and I kind of hope that I don't get a bad curveball. And also, just to point out, if we get a duplicate, we're going to respin because we want to learn different distros here. Oh, I I want Bazite right now. I'll take it. Oh no. <gasps> Oop. Oh, mint. mint. Linux See, Mint. I actually have like, I have the ever so slightest um, background with Ubuntu, but I've never touched Mint before, ever. Right though, he's gonna get minty. Okay. I've heard Mint's good though. It seems like a pretty popular one. What do you think your price is gonna be? I'm hoping it's a good amount, because I really want to do, oh god. Oh, 350. 350. 350. I will take that. That's nice, that's nice. I will take three, okay, stop. Stop. <laughs> Please. It's a mint, 350 bucks. Will you lose Add $25? 25. Add 25? Please don't make me do RGB. Oh! Upgrade <laughs> Office PC! <laughs> you know what, you guys are right about adding more because that was very suspenseful. Dude, I really thought, yeah, I almost got plus 25 and said I got Upgrade Office PC. So we're gonna be upgrading a bunch of Office computers today, guys. So what'd you get in total? So, uh, mint for the operating system or distro, uh, 350 bucks, an upgraded Office PC only, which I'm gonna be honest, I feel like either one of us probably would have done for this price. Yeah, much easier that way. So let's get to shopping. We're gonna look at the requirements for each OS and determine what we wanna do there, learn a little bit more about it, and um, yeah, get to buying, and then you'll see the entire process of us either doing an easy job at setting up our Linux distro or struggling, <laughs> and then we'll see if it was all worth it in the end. Let's go shop. This OS is very similar to Steam OS, and, and it works really well in a bunch of different handhelds as well. Do you need any CPU really? CPU doesn't seem to matter. Graphics card just needs to be a modern AMD GPU. The shipping costs are stupid on eBay right now. What is going on? Okay, so this has RAM, but no hard drive. I think I can work with that. Yes. 
156, so I have 143 bucks. I'm not doing this again, Matt. I'm not going to get something that doesn't fit in a build again. I refuse. I need, a hard, I need an SSD too, so I gotta chill. So I think this one might be the most cost effective. Yeah, let's go with this one. I think the shipping is a scam, I'll be totally honest with you. I think we're good. All right, let's go ahead and order everything, and then I gotta learn Bazite, and hopefully this will work just fine on this PC. From what I can tell, Mint doesn't really seem to have like a ton of system requirements. Literally two gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of space, and 1024 resolution. One thing I do wanna do is go AMD. Let's do Ryzen HP. Ooh, 3400 G. I don't really want small form factor though. You know, tested and working white layer of dust. We're just gonna go and round up. We're gonna say 150 on the graphics card. So that means we have 200. Ooh, with that shipping though, we're gonna be a little over. Okay, see, I don't hate that. We have 12 gigs of RAM. So that means it's guaranteed to have dual channel. We're gonna need a SATA to eight pin. Okay, so 3229 for a brand new one. Subtotal to 327 with shipping. Let's go ahead and check out. And then uh, once these get here, Matt and I'll get them built. My PC is finally here. So 350 bucks to spend, which pretty respectable, especially for something like Linux. I did some research on Mint and I'll be honest, I still don't feel like I know anything. And now another thing is, I don't know if my graphics card's gonna fit. I'm gonna go ahead and say it now before you guys get mad at me in the comments. My graphics card choice, it's interesting. I wouldn't recommend it at home. As usual, this is a challenge. And with the challenge, I wanna win. All right, look, it actually came with 12 gigs of RAM from the factory. You see the, the sticker here? That's, I, that's always, I, I love that. Let's go ahead and open it up because I wanna see what type of expandability I have if I can find a screwdriver. Oh man, we're already using the NVMe slot. Well, that sucks. I guess I might just have to replace this drive, which honestly should be good. This could definitely be a solid little upgrade and these have pretty good uh, read and write speeds. I think my graphics card is gonna fit just fine. But the main note with this power supply is we are rocking a solid, so many watts. We get 180 watts, 180 watts, yeah. Oh yeah, Matt, I hear him screaming over there. Whoa. <laughs> the good news is we are running Linux, which should be uh, a little less demanding than Windows. This is right here is a 6600, NARC 6600. That looks a lot better. That was, a, that was a quick, easy process. Yeah, this is one of those ones where, I mean, guys, it's bad enough. Normally I would just be like, oh, let's just sell it for cheap, a PC roast. This is getting a different GPU. Maybe no GPU at all, honestly. 5600 Gs, or 3600 Gs, still um, a solid choice for something just like regular everyday Linux. Let's go ahead and get some games on it. All right, so to give you guys an update on Mint OS, uh, so far, it's been pretty good. Um, the only real hurdle I've had uh, that was more serious was I was trying to install Mint on the actual computer, but I was clicking the wrong option. I was just pressing run. So it looked like I was in Mint, but every time I tried to launch Steam or do anything, I was getting errors. Well, it turns out you need to do the OEM install and then it'll actually install on the SSD, which we have now. The only other real thing I haven't figured out just yet is how to get a controller working. I've gotten the Bluetooth working, like where the controller shows up, but it isn't working in Rocket League. So we may have to go mouse and keyboard. That's just one example of where Windows can be a little bit easier to use. Let's go ahead and uh, keep on going forwards and present what we got. I got it set up on an actually pretty nice 120 Hertz Pixio monitor. I have a few games here. Now I will explain in a minute that not all of them work, some applications, and then the PC, of course, with the 3400G and the RX 6600 and the SSD that we added. It's all good to go. My overall experience is pretty chill. So let's go grab Matt. Matt, we need you. I'm busy. What are y'all doing? Oh, I don't know, nothing too important. All right, so we got Mint set up and I'm on I'm on Cinnamon. So Cinnamon, Mint. Cinna cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon, okay. There is a few different types of Mint, you know, like there's ones for older desktops like Mint Lite. Okay. Um, this is just like the pretty standard desktop edition. So yeah, you, you can change like where everything is. You can change the colors, the backgrounds, the nice. themes. So it's pretty cool. It's kind of like a Windows vibe, Windows 7, you know, it's kind okay. of in the, off to the left. It's installed on my 512 gig SSD, so okay. Gen 3. What else you got in that build? <laughs> I'm, I'm like wondering what the story is behind this build. So HP. Yeah, HP. So uh, 3400 G okay. and RX 6600. Okay. Solid, right? That's not bad. Because yeah. you had 350, you said you were under a little bit? Yeah, I was under a little bit e even after getting the SSD. I thought about getting more RAM, but I think I already had 12 gigs of RAM. Yeah, good luck getting that off. I glued it. You glued um, it? So not for any particular reason. Is there, is there a reason why? No, nah, no, I just, you know, just, this is no reason to open it up or anything. I see an adapter. Oh yeah, what kind of adapter? <laughs> uh, uh, is it, oh God. Oh, oh God. he's breaking it, my it, PC. It's, it's SATA. Oh, yes. he's got dual channel memory. That's nice. We got Fang Shang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is a 180 watt power supply. <laughs> have we hooked this up to a watt reader yet? No. <laughs> it's beautiful. Looking good, zero watts. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. I'd say the desktop environment is, 
I mean, I've messed with Linux a long time ago and it was very similar to where it was mm -hmm. like super user friendly, but it's all the stuff behind the scenes when you're actually trying to launch something or actually trying to do something other than just looking at the desktop where it gets kind of complicated. Oh yeah. But you're saying so far Steam seemed to work just fine. Yeah, all I had to do was just type in the software manager and I don't know if this is most operating systems that are on Linux, but you have this really nice user interface. Like for example, if I want Steam, I just type in Steam and then uh, you can download Steam right here. And nice. then these are like extra packages. Let's just, let's just see if this launches because Steam just won't pull up right now. All right, so I restarted and now Steam is open. And I, oh, Halo has a little update. Now it's launching, let's okay. go. Now shout out to AMD. AMD has been very like forward on supporting Linux, especially with their graphics cards and drivers like that. And everything just works out the gate. Um, and even when you can update the drivers manually, I'm assuming most of the updates would probably come with like distro like updates. So like mm -hmm. updating through Linux instead of updating through AMD for drivers. Yeah, which I'm totally cool with. As long as the game's running like it should, but it's hard to tell. All right guys, so uh, I, Halo just wasn't loading. I feel like now that I'm trying to present this, I'm not having good luck. <laughs> There's I like mean, no text yep, on anything. Yeah, <laughs> My menus have no text. I had to like guess to get into the game, but I mean, hey, mouse and keyboard works fine. I'm not at all proficient with mouse and keyboard, but it works. Uh, we're getting like 60 FPS. I don't even know what's set, bro. Wasn't this one um, one that doesn't support Linux technically now? Yeah, when you open the game, it literally says like uh, no no Linux support or something along those lines. It says no no Linux or Mac support, I think, which is kind of wild. So I guess they dropped that with their anti-cheat. Uh, it's probably the same deal as all the other ones. <laughs> I love the no text. But you're getting 60 really? FPS, so I mean, it's at least gaming. What are we doing wattage-wise? Only 60 watts. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Shout out Rocket League, baby. We need to bring back this, guys. This is such a good, like Left 4 Dead, so scary when that launched. Yeah, we're getting like 80 to 100 FPS. When we nice. die, we get 200. <laughs> so hey, the games that really work on Linux, it seems like they really do work well. I just don't have a ton of like, it seems like all my old games are Linux, like Half-Life, Gary's Mod, basically anything Valve, yeah. like OG Valve pretty much. Dude, they got such a unique combo here. We got, <laughs> we got the Medic making this guy Uber. TF2 worked really well. So, so far, I've gotten two games. I will say one of them, uh, like Rocket League, I don't know what was going on. It didn't act like that before. But um, I think now, I guess we'll try Halo again because I think it's the only other, actually wait, I think Fallout. Oh, uh, Fallout? I don't think I okay. ever tried it. Okay, let's try Fallout. I know that I got past this earlier, I think. Maybe I'm just going too fast. Like I need to like, I press it once. I press it once and then I wait, or maybe enter. Jackson! <laughs> 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 yeah, keep this close. Oh Holy crap! We're playing though! It looks. It, see, do you see what I'm saying? It has a like a little funky, bit of choppiness, yeah. Which I don't know if that has anything to do with. Oh my god, what gun is that? Oh, it's cap, oh this is a small capture flag map. I, I'm getting like over 100 FPS, but it doesn't really. F oh, you know what? Sometimes it is smooth. What if it has to do with the power? It could be. You could be getting powered throttled. Yeah, I mean, guys, quit worrying with the wattage. I don't know why y'all are so worried. Dude, what is <laughs> happening in this game? <laughs> oh, I'm hitting. I'm hitting. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really here to sell you on Mint Matt. <laughs> Have you sold me? I don't really think so. I think I've gotten a little bit unlucky with um, either my install or like the way I've used it. I'm by no means a, a Linux. I'm, I'm like, I would consider myself like barely even novice, honestly. I'm gonna show you some of my applications now, Matt, and then I think I'm ready to check out Bazite. All right, so I just wanna show you my application real quick. Um, I'm curious what you got too, but I got Google Earth. I've always thought this is kinda Fire. cool. It's pretty smooth. I know Google Earth is actually pretty hard to run. So this is GIMP of sorts. So let's go ahead and pull in an image. This is basically like a Photoshop that's free to use. The Peppa. <laughs> okay, here comes the Peppa. Do you remember how to move it? He doesn't know how to remember M. it. Do I need to get Zach? Oh, there you go, M. I am not a Photoshop person, by the way, but it does seem like it's kind of like, it's better than paint. This was interesting. So I normally use Vegas. I know most people here use Premiere. We're gonna see just how well or horrible this works. So 4K footage recorded straight on the camera Jonah's using now. It's pretty cool. Just a cheap little, not even cheap, free video editing software. Pretty useful. We got Discord. I'm, I don't wanna log in, but it's Discord. You guys know how that works. It's supported on Linux. And then the last thing was Bamboo Studio. This does require login, but this is a basic 3D app, like for 3D modeling, but you can also use it to actually print to your printers and everything. And uh, once you log in, you know, it's a very useful app. I really, I we only needed three actual usable applications. I just got a few that I wanted to see how they worked and they all seem to work really well. So besides my games not working super great on Mint, which it's supposed to be a pretty game forward operating system with everything else as well. I think it was a pretty good experience overall. We'll see what Bazite's all about. Bazite.
All right, guys, it's time for me to dive into Linux. Once again, I had $300 to spend, so I was a little bit more limited than Jackson was. I ended up going with a Lenovo workstation. My idea was get a slightly better CPU than I would with just a normal HP or something like that. And um, maybe in the long run have better gaming performance. But also I'm kind of curious if something like this Lenovo workstation would work with Bazite, which is the Linux distro I had to get. The only thing that I really had to make sure of is that I had an AMD GPU that was 5000 series or greater. And it comes with a Quadro card, which in any other Linux distro, if like Jackson and I swapped, it would work just fine. Um, but this Quadro is not gonna work great. Honestly, it's a little dusty, it's not horrible. Um, single channel memory. Oh no, buddy. But hey, this is gonna be a fun test because the idea of Linux is you're utilizing much more of your hardware because the operating system is much more lightweight. So maybe single channel won't be as bad. It probably will still be a problem, but we'll test it here. I'll give it a little bit of a mm, dusting real quick over the trash can because we got a little bit of dust here. But let me show you the rest of the stuff that I have. SSD is just a brand new BX500 480 gigabyte, which, and then my graphics card is the 5500 XT, which, Jonah, there's no way I was gonna have Fitment issues. It's a 5500 XC 8 gig, it's 5000 series, probably the cheapest card that I could get that was 5000 series that would work great with Bazite, but I made sure to get an adapter because this power supply, I will say benefit to uh, Lenovo with these workstations does come with a six pin power, but we're going to adapt it to eight, which again, it's much safer than the SATA route. Release the Kraken. What is in there? There's something rattling around here. What is it? Oh, here it comes. That. What'd you get? What'd you get? That's. Oh. I, I have no idea what that's for. Ew! Back up, Jonah. That'll never be seen from again. The power supply, by the way, mentioned that adapter is a 450 watt power supply, which plenty of watts. That should work just fine for this setup. Make sure everything fits. <laughs> Ironic if there was some reason why it didn't fit. I would just quit these challenges forever. I'll go iGPU for everyone on build. So that's in, we're good to go. We gotta wait for um, some more stuff to come in from PC Bros. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it the, um, the normal way, the way that most of you at home should do it. Because again, it's fine. There she is. We should be good to install Bazite. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to get my USB going. And once we have the USB, it should be as simple as plugging in the USB, downloading, getting in there, and then drivers should auto install. Again, we're learning this as we go. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this video considering a lot of people have been begging us to do Linux content, but hopefully it's as easy as I think it's gonna be, especially because I did my due diligence in terms of looking up research for what hardware supported. She's on. I think she's just on. Hey guys, uh, it is uh, day one of trying to get uh, Bazite installed on my PC. And I'll be honest with you, I am getting flashbacks to when uh, I tried to set up the mining break with my OS. If you watch that video, for the past four or five hours, something wrong with this cable that I had. 20 freaking attempts. I basically struggled to figure out that. Great, so far off to a great start. It can be a little more complicated with some of the stuff going on behind the scenes in Windows to make a Linux USB that functions properly. I now have to wait for this uh, flash drive to finish formatting through disk part and then I'll reflash it again and hopefully that fixed it or I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Um, the initial install that I did was only the desktop environment. I believe when I was doing the checklist options, I didn't have it to where it defaulted to the gamepad or the game experience um, environment, which is really what the Steam Deck looks like. So because of that, I went back and reinstalled using the home theater mode, which again, you don't really have to use the home theater mode. You can use the desktop mode with the environment enabled, but I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right um, and it wouldn't happen again. So I went and installed the home theater environment, installed a bunch of games back, and now, hey, we're launching into our first game actually. Everything seems to just work. So I installed all the games, um, did the whole process, and um, now I have a really cool uh, home theater-like environment, or basically like my own console environment that is now launching Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I got a bunch of applications installed on the desktop as well. So I'm gonna go through and just make sure all these work, but I think I am ready. All right, so I uh, just finished setting up my, um, well, Bazite PC, and I need to go get, um, what, the, what the heck is going on here? Um, guys? You two ready? Yep. I'm just gonna <laughs> act like that didn't happen. That's cool. Took a little bit of time, but once I got it set up, I really like it. So, okay. Ba this so Bazite looks like a, like a, a console. Yeah. So basically, Bazite is a copy of like the Steam Deck interface or a better version of Steam Big Picture. All right, here we go. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Yeah, we go. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. There we go. Okay. Hey, all right, all right, and was that right. just native or did you have this to This was set? native, so oh, I didn't have good. to do anything. So um, this is what it will boot to every single time, which mm -hmm. is the, the game mode uh, that has everything installed. You can do 
So you go here, you can go to your library. And what it does is see it has games that are rated for great on deck. So like all the ones that are like good for Steam Deck basically. Mm -hmm. So it would work natively on here. So here's all the ones you can install. Uh, all games, so you can just go through, install all your games in here. It sorts by like a sort of a category and everything. These, wow. are, these are all my Steam games. I installed three games. So we got the finals, which we'll show in a second, God of War and Spider-Man. Um, so then we have all those installed and then you go through here, you can see all this different stuff. One thing I really like, if you do control two, now I will say there is an option that you should be able to get this work on a controller, but I could not get it to work, but I figured out the key bind in here. This is like a quick select option mm -hmm. that allows you to basically app wide, any game you can limit the frame rate, you can do some built-in manual overclocking and TDP limits on your graphics cards. Mm -hmm. um, you can scale games exactly. on your own. Um, and the one thing, <laughs> what were you saying? That's what Jackson needed. Yeah. <laughs> I needed and, a, watt, a watt limiter. And then this right here, which I have set up, is a performance overlay, uh, which is absolutely, honestly, it's like better than Afterburner, I'll be honest with you. Um, and then all this other stuff you have where you can just see your friends and everything. It's very console-like, but before I launch a game, we're yeah, going what, to- what kind of specs are you running? Oh yeah, I'll try to tell you the specs. Yeah, I'm here. curious, I see you got oh, a wait, I, station. I can show you, a one P410. second. A P410? Uh, see, I got a P410. Scroll down here. So we're currently rocking. Oh, this is like system info. I know. We're currently rocking a Xeon, an E5 1650 V4. So it's a six core, 12 thread. Okay. Uh, Xeon, very basic. Uh, we also have a 5500 XT, and I picked that GPU in particular. It might seem like a weird GPU because this OS really likes 5000 series or greater mm. AMD GPUs. You can do older ones and you can do NVIDIA, you but- You should have taken my 6600, it would've been perfect. It would've been perfect for this, honestly. Uh, it works really well, like out of the box, yeah. all the drivers are good to go for, you don't have to do anything, it just pops up, it works. Um, and it has everything set up here. Eight gigs of VRAM, it's the eight gig model, so we do have a good amount of VRAM there. But Now, one question I did have before we game, do you have a desktop mode? I do. Okay. So what we have is this interface right here, and if you want to switch, so let's go to, let's hold the middle button, go to power, and let's switch to desktop mode. So if you want to use it as a desktop, just like you would in Mint, you mm -hmm. go from that mode to desktop, and then here you can obviously just do normal stuff like you would, um, if you were just using it in a normal desktop. So here oh, cool. is the Bazai desktop. It looks good. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, in terms of my applications Dude, I installed. that looks just like Windows when you pull it up. It all works really well. Um, I will give them a big shout out to, let's see, where is the Bazai portal that pops up when you first launch. Um, it allows you to pretty easily go through and install anything you want out the mm. gate. Open RGB if you have RGB software on your PC. I was showing that you get the Wootility for oh, Wooting cool. keyboards. You get that <laughs> pre-installed. Um, then you go, see, I'll just say install, and then you can go through and install your web browsers. So you can mm. install any web browser you want. You can install any gaming stuff you want. So these are all like so GeForce Now, uh, Minecraft Launcher, you can go install that. Um, wow. Some other random stuff, TeamSpeak. I don't know why TeamSpeak's in there. This is definitely a little more user-friendly, I think, than Mint was. Yeah, music, you can install Spotify. And um, speaking of all that, I can just go out of here now. But that allowed me to install basic applications. I only installed three, so we have, we have Slack. Oh, Slack. So shout out Slack. Like there's some encryption <laughs> issues that pop up like this because I think I had to install in legacy and not secure boot mode. And a lot of these applications rely on secure boot, but I'm able to get around them. So. Oh yeah, no, let's see it works Hello, good. I am talking on Linux. from Linux. Smile. And there you go. It worked. So Slack works. Slack is what we use for our communications. So that's, that's pretty nice. And look, so Slack's good there. Um, and then I also did, we got music, copyright music. I mean, I'm, there's the speakers from my <laughs> from my computer is what that's playing out of. Wow, do you, it's playing on like the little front speaker. It is. All right, oh, oh no, he sent the preview. Um, uh -oh. But hey, Spotify works great. Only thing that I wish it did is when you switch to the gamepad mode, it does not keep running in the background. You're basically switching instances. So pretty so. much, yeah, I would say it almost looked like it in a way restarted. So exactly. anything that you're doing in the background, like, will it stay up? So a lot of it is, I don't think it'll stay up. Um, from what I've seen is you open stuff up, then you switch to gamepad mode. You're kind of using the desktop mode as a way to configure the gaming mode. Right. For in a sense. So like, if you want to go in here and just run normal Steam, you would go in here and then you would just install your games like normal. And then you would switch to the gamepad mode and do that. Or if you want to configure stuff through here, you can do mm. that as well. Um, but the best part is obviously this being a Steam OS, Steam was just pre-installed with all the Proton layers. Everything was good to go. That's cool. Um, and then where is the last? 
last thing. Oh, I got VLC. 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 So that's so basically playing one. videos and stuff. Playing videos. And then I had Blender. I didn't get anything for it, but Blender is supported. Cool. Um, so you do 3D modeling and things like that. So those are the applications. We're going to go ahead and, if you want to turn to gaming mode, return the game mode. And I'm really excited about the overlay. This is the last thing that I was really hoping to get done before, and it wasn't working, but I finally got it. The overlay is like kind of nutty. Um, and I got three games that you'll probably see the same issue that Jackson had about the shaders and stuff, because it's still a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the compatibility stuff that Linux has to deal with, but... I guess it's, yeah, it's called Vulcan shaders, yes. whatever that means. So I think it's probably doing some sort of adapting to make that work, but I think, I think it's really cool just based on the whole idea of having a console-like interface. So let's just do Spider-Man. Hit play. I'm really see. excited to see the comments on this video because I bet so many people are going to tell us all the things we're, we did wrong, you know, Real which would be really cool, honestly. Let us know what we should have done different. And look at this. <laughs> look Holy at this freaking crap. overlay, bro. So that like this. solid. And you didn't have to set all that up, I'm guessing. No, so it just do controlled two. Work, 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 work. So there's different levels of it. So you can have that one. You can do oh. that one. Oh, that one's clean. Or that's just 60. Hmm. So, so like that one, I probably leave out because you can just see general FPS yeah. and everything. But yeah, you got it seems like so far yours is definitely overall a better OS, I've, at least in, in your use case. It seems better. It seems like it'd be better for me. But I do think what you had to go, go through to get it installed, I had the advantage there. Yeah, definitely. Um, it did take a little bit of time to get all working. Sweet. But games run really smooth. So like yeah. right now, everything is limited to like a native like lock 60, which for a game like this, I would just run lock when 60. When you say limited, is that because of Linux or is that... So that's just based on the operating system. So like across the board, it basically has a built-in VSync mm -hmm. that'll allow you to just limit the frame rate if you want to. Um, oh, okay. And you can just change that however. So you can get more than 60 yes. if you want. Yeah, okay. yeah, can. Yeah, I'd be interested to know because I know that's a bragging point we hear a lot about Linux is people saying like, oh, it runs way better because it's a lot less intensive than Windows. Mm. But I'm, I'm like, how much better really does Linux normally let a game run? You I know? know. That'd be curious. If you guys figure out what kind of Linux to show you want to see in the future, if you do like these kind of videos, it might be worth us doing a ultra budget PC and then trying gaming performance on, on both, Windows yeah. and Linux. Maybe Bazai just see what the difference is. It makes sense. Oh, yeah. I never, um, I need to say how many watts you using once you get in. Oh, yeah. You get 124 right now. Power supply is a 450 watt. Oh, that's good. Everyone yeah. got a war. Got a war, just walking around. Pretty much 60 FPS. I think I'm the running. 60 actually looks good. Yeah, I think I'm running like something about playing controller in 60 doesn't bother me as much as like keyboard and mouse games, like FPS shooters. You know, like, I, I think you're right because it, it looks like you have higher refresh rate yeah. because you can't like jerk, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, no, this is one that works just fine. I mean, this area is not super demanding, but. Honestly, I think this is a puzzle that I never figured out. So 100, I don't think 170 watts. 170 yeah, watts. Yeah, nice. Ahead, man. 1080p with uh, upscaling. So we got FSR2 running. Mm. So there's that. So not bad. Not too bad. It definitely could scale that up a little bit more um, and get even more FPS. But the last one I do want to test, and I will say I've not tested it since um, I initially installed before without the game mode. I did a one install that didn't have the game mode, and then I did another install that has game mode. So again, time investment, but it was one of the things where I definitely learned a lot on how this works. We're gonna go ahead and switch back to desktop. Is it the finals? And try the finals. Yeah, cool. so we're in the finals um, from the desktop, which again, that does get rid of like the performance overlay stuff. So I just put the Steam one on there just to see. We are at 1440p, which I wouldn't normally run 1440p for 5500 XC, but Hey, we're here. Let's just show you guys that boom. it works. How many booms? 100 FPS. Oh, oh God. Oh God. So the bot shoot. shoot back? Apparently. Let's go. <laughs> Blood almost got cooked by a bot. I'd be curious. You know, it's, we always do these challenges, and then I always come to the conclusion, like we should have taken the 6600, put it in here, the 5500 XT in um, your build, and then like wattage wise, it would have been lower. I feel like it'd been balanced. My build was very unbalanced because I had that extra 50 bucks, so I could go crazy. So yeah, no, this is uh, this has been working out. I was pleasantly surprised. It did take a lot of time to work, and if you guys saw the series with the mining rig, it was the same deal. Uh, but once I got the install going and everything, and realized what I was working with, I was pretty happy with it. So what do you what do you think about Bazite? Overall, it seems like a better experience. Um, I still I, I want Linux to keep going. You know, I want the installs to get easier and more obvious because one of the things that I think Matt and I were both seeing is. A lot of the people that give guides on Linux are very Linux heavy and they almost think people know more than they do. But when guys like us who are used to Windows get into Linux for the first time, it's scary. So yes. I, I would love to see more 
tutorials and guides out there on how to get things working easier. Yeah, and if you guys wanna see PC builds that are Linux focused, let us know down below. But this mm -hmm. was a good way to introduce some Linux content on the channel and you all can tell us if you like it or not. But uh, yeah, we've done our Linux experience. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so this was a fun little challenge and I would say in a way we both met our goals. I did agree that I think Bazite, a little more user friendly, a little bit better once you get past the install point, but hey, I think we both got pretty lucky getting good operating systems. Yeah, Linux has definitely come a long way in terms of gaming. It does have its issues, but in terms of getting everything up and running and playing games through Steam, it works pretty good. Now we'd still have concerns about average people switching to Linux because of the anti-cheat blocks in games like Fortnite and other big titles out there that you just cannot play on Linux, which I think is still gonna hold a lot of people back, but it was still fun to try and give a honest review of both Linux distros and uh, Bazite's fun and Linux Mint is very user friendly when you get everything set up. So if you guys want to, well, shop for a PC yourself to install Linux on, use the link's description down below. They will be filling, they will help us out. Let us know in the comments down below if you wanna see any other Linux content here on the channel. And if you like this video, drop a like. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys the next one. Bye bye. Now both of these PCs will be a PCBros.tech. This one's gonna get a different GPU and they're both gonna get Windows installed in them, but you always have the choice to install Linux. We won't take your warranty away for that. PCBros.tech, you can buy gaming PCs and do whatever you want with them within reason. I was trying to <laughs> add that within reason part. That is very important. Uh, use code TOSTYBROS on checkout. You'll save 3% on your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.